All right, all right, all right. Guru here. Just getting ready to tie up a few spinners. Um, talk a little bit about the dam counts, what they did this week. Uh, of course, everybody's just destroying them at Buoy 10 right now. But uh, wish I could be there. But duty calls, duty calls. But um, if my last video, I talked heavily about the dam count. So that's why I'm coming with this one right now. So the Schnooks and the Steelhead dropped off. I think yesterday Steelhead dropped off to like 500. Um, Chinooks are right around there. They We had oh about a week long there of, you know, close to 2,000 or more than 2,000. Same with the Steelhead. It was always, you know, 1,000. It's been 1,000, at least 1,000 for a while. If you look at the Dalles, I think they have 30,000 over the Dalles. But 75,000 over um, Bonneville. Well, some of those fish could have been going up to Clickitat, a few other tributaries, uh, you know. But we're going to see the Dows. They'll bump up. And trust me, the counts at Bonneville are really going to bump up the deeper we get into September. Um, so that really is where, you know, if. You really want to target the fish at like the most prime time with the least amount of people be either below or above Bonneville um, for the fall fishing this year. Uh, you know, buoy 10 is great, but it is a lot of hard work getting in and out a lot of times unless you have a slip of some kind and you keep your boat down there or, you know that type of thing for everybody you know average everyday people um a lot of us don't own boats so that's kind of why i do these videos um you know i have people i can go fishing with but i'm getting my very first drift boat here probably next week hopefully before labor day because i'd like to take it out labor day uh but We'll see. I'm not rushing Willie, and I've been waiting a long time for to build my own custom drift boat. Um, I have a small pontoon boat, kayak, stuff like that, smaller craft, but you know, I've never owned my own drift boat. And few inflatables, of course, but this is, you know, going to be the fun time for me where I finally get to put it all together and share it with everybody but getting back to the dam counts um you know they fell off a little bit don't don't be discouraged um you know you don't need a boat if you're above or below bonneville um there's plenty of places especially below bonneville that a guy can go plunking and some days especially in this fall fishing do better than the boat guys because there's so many fish and they're holding tight to the bank, you know, and uh, I've seen a lot of bank guys just absolutely put the clinic to the boat guys, especially on the fall run. They, uh, those fish, they're, they're really boogieing. You know, Springer's boogie, but the fall fish seem to really, really boogie. They're trying to get up fast. And uh, there's a nice number five. Um, where are my hooks? Ear hooks. There we go. Number three VMC, round bend treble. One of the best treble hooks ever made. But they... That run, the fall run. No, where is all my... Boy, I should have got everything together before I started doing this video, huh? I'm slacking. <laughs> but, you know, like getting back, there's so many great places to, to fish from the bank. 
this time of year. Um, don't feel obligated like you need a boat. You do not need a boat. Um, you know, we go up and hammer the Deschutes up there in the lower end of the river. It's open right now. I've been talking about it quite a bit. Um, that's a place where, it's, man, all you have to do really is just throw a spinner. And that's kind of the the thing. Or nothing beats good old corky and yarn up there. Of course, there in the Deschutes, no bait, no soft plastics, nothing like that. So, But, uh, hey, we've been blessed with the corky. And, you know, a lot of guys up there run double and triple corky rigs. Just as a single egg presentation, various colors, you know. Um, sky's kind of the limit on corkies. Of course, the best selection there is around is at Fisherman's Marine Supply. So, go there and knock yourself out. I got a couple big giant bags of corkies. I still buy a fair amount every year. Just so I have them. Because a lot of fisheries, you can't use soft plastics and... Nothing, you know, compares to a good old fat corky, especially pink pearl, peach, you know, all the pirate colors. There you go. Just going to put some goodies on the blade here and maybe a few spots, but just trying to get a bunch tied up for this fall. Let me set you right there. Let's do a pink. But, uh... Pretty soon, we'll see a spike at the Dalles in those counts. And that is when you need to be there. There is no doubt about it. That And the fall counts are only going to get better, like I was saying. Sorry to sound redundant. Um, but we are officially in front of the run. Um, hopefully, we're going to get some rain soon. If that happens... Oh, buddy. All those fish down in the lower Columbia it won't take very long. They'll get that stink in their nose and they're going to start boogieing. You know, I'm hoping this year we see days at Bonneville where we see, you know, 15, 16,000 false Chinooks going over a day. You know, I mean, it'll just be pandemonium. It'll absolutely. And that's what, you know, us Northwest fishermen have needed for a while is is some pandemonium, but, um, I had a guy message me not that long ago. Uh, he did really good at Tanner Creek off the bank. I talked about that spot. It's on the, the Oregon side right there below the, uh, the dam and all the hatchery and everything right there. It's real easy to get to. A lot of people know it, but, um, you can go across to the Island on the Washington side, even with an Oregon license. If you're fishing the lower Columbia there, they, they allow you, you know, if you have an Oregon license, you can fish in Washington. If you have a Washington license, you can fish on the Oregon side. Doesn't matter there. But um, uh, over there on the island, man, there is some absolutely fantastic fishing. Um, it's just down below Bonneville there, just a ways. Um, just follow the signs to the fish hatchery. It's pretty... The name escapes me for some reason now. I'm having a brain fart. But um, it's not hard to find. You can see it on a map. There's a big old fish hatchery out there. It's a pretty cool place. Just to go out and hang out, run your dog or something. Um, where is my blade? Got to clean this powder coat off. Otherwise, the on the shaft here, the uh, the bearing beads won't spin right. I always add a double bearing bead to make absolutely sure that blade's going to spin. Um, plus, I get think it gives it a different profile. But you don't have to. You know, one's fine. And then a number five right here with the number three clevis. I run a little smaller clevis. You could probably use a four if you wanted to, but you know, a lot of guys use twos because they want to get that um, that blade tighter to the shaft 
for better rotation because um, it's not grabbing as much water and you don't get the thump. So like, you know, with a number four and the blade further away from the shaft, you get more thump out of it and it creates a larger profile. But I find a number three, you know, um, you kind of get the best of both worlds, a little tighter, but still has good thump with a size five blade. Pretty gravy. But um, yeah, I'm looking so forward to the next week here. Week or two, hopefully I get my boat. And um, if we are, for sure, I will be up on the Deschutes um, Labor Day weekend. At least one day. Um, I don't know. The wife might not let me go too. So we got some family obligations. I can't go buck wild just yet on the plane for the fall, but pretty soon I'll be able to. So that's fine. But um, also, we can't forget about the North Coast. Fish are already coming into the bays. They're there. I already know people that have caught them out in the jaws and in the bay, uh, even in tide water. But I'm going to do the locals a solid and not mention where in tide water because, you know, let them have the fish for a little while. We'll be down there soon enough. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, if you sniff around, <coughs> even this time of year, we'll find some fall fish in Tidewater. They'll always be there. Now, the farther you go north, like say, you'll see the first ones like in Nehalem Bay. You typically see the first shot of fish about August 1st. In fact, there's a hole on the, the main uh, Nehalem River. And... Uh, that hole I'm not going to mention, but it's known. Um, and you can find it. Anybody can. So I'm going to let you treasure hunt that one. But uh, there's a hole that up there, um, you know, not too far from, uh, from Tidewater that you can pretty much set your clock to it. Those fish are going to be in there 1st of August every year, at least on the morning tide. They'll always be there. It's always been that way. I don't always go up there every year, but I know that they'll be there. It's that consistent. Um, and you'll always in the Halem Bay get a, you know, August 1st, get a few, few fish coming in. When I mean a few, I mean maybe a couple hundred, you know, um, but it's enough. And the silvers in the Halem Bay, same thing. You'll see them earlier. Typically, you know, it wouldn't surprise me right now, getting close to September in Alum Bay, you wouldn't start seeing a few silvers already sniffing around in there. The majority of them are always come uh, the last two weeks of September in there, and you'll get another big push of Chinooks. You get any measurable rain in September and October, it sucks everything in to every bay on the North Coast. That's, that's just the norm. Tillamook Bay, probably more so than anything because it has so many freshwater rivers that are feeding it. Um, you know, uh, and we've been blessed the last three Octobers. We have gotten a blowout in October and it's been awesome. Off the charts, just insane schnooks constantly. Boy, my eyes. I'm getting old. I can't even see them in the container but I think I need to get some more light in here someone please send a comment do I need more light can you see what I'm doing I'm just trying to see what these look like just the few that I've made maybe I'll add some uh, I'm definitely going to add some spots to the blade but sometimes like these I do a um, just a UV tape on the bottom of the blade you know I will say this, in the sandy, the UV tape seems to matter, but the other rivers I fish, on the north coast especially, it doesn't seem to matter so much, um, the UV. Um, 
I'm not totally sold that UV is the be all end all of everything, but I can tell you on the sand, Sandy, it matters. And um, the Deschutes, some days it doesn't matter, some days it does matter. Um, oh, what's the other? Uh, the Wilson, same thing. Some days it matters, some days it doesn't matter. Over on the Trask, it never matters. The Nastucca, it doesn't matter. Um, but it just seems to be just a few areas where it, I don't know, just seems to matter. Grab a five here. Let's dump a bunch of fives out here. But uh, don't forget in Halem Bay, getting back. That's my favorite place to go. We are definitely going to be, as soon as I can get my boat registered, how fast. I just got insurance on it, or trying to get the quote for the insurance on it. Um, so we're all ready to go. Protected my investment. If you are getting a boat in Oregon, you don't necessarily have to have boaters insurance, but let me tell you, it's a good idea to protect your butt. There's a lot of idiots out there, especially even if you're just doing float trips. So it doesn't help to have insurance. It doesn't hurt to have a concealed weapons carry permit either. Like I said, there's a lot of assholes out there and it's only getting worse. And, you know, people are crazy these days. People are absolutely crazy. They'll, you know, throw down for no reason, overfishing. And you got to protect yourself. You know, you can't, can't go out there being naive. It's unfortunate that fishing has come to that. But I think if we all work together, we can change that shit. Where I don't have to carry a gun when I'm on the river. Because some drunk asshole fucking who's been partying all night. Feels he owns the river and all the fish. Alright, there we go. Beautiful orange. And we need to finish the blue. Gorgeous blue. Blue is kind of the... The blue and the pink are probably the... The most successful. At least here, uh, North Coast wise. But that green there. This guy here. That, or green or yellow, whatever you want to call it. It's kind of a yellow green, but that one right there, that's absolute magic with a, uh, a number five um, black nickel blade. Um, it's been that pattern with the black nickel and I actually, oh, I don't have any, it's a similar to this. It's a little bit, I thought I had, I thought I had one. So basically it's that tape that you see on this inline blade, that tape, but it's on this number five. It's not the pink. But uh, that was absolute money winner. Um, and it, I'm using that in the wintertime. Most underutilized color in the wintertime is black nickel. Um, the, the great thing about the black nickel is imagine you're a fish. You're, you know, you're always looking up. This black nickel, and it gets a certain amount of shine to it too, you know. But what it does is it actually blocks out the light better. So it contrasts. The contrast of the spinner and is so much better than a hammered silver. But the hammered silver, of course, what do they do? They see that farther away. Um, and it's probably the most common. But if you are tying your own spinners and not using black nickel, you are you're leaving a tool out here's another one i do with green these are all getting set up these black nickel here um that i have here's another orange but i tie these all up specifically these are my go-to's on the deschutes um and i do some hammered in line too but this 
these inline blades specifically this is a i think this is a six yeah because it's actually bigger than the five a little bit length yeah it's a six inline um no i didn't put anything on it but there's hammered silver in the deschutes river the the inline is king in my opinion um, and is not used nearly enough. And again, if you're tying your own spinners, nothing beats, and I mean nothing, um, the inline spinner uh, in the Deschutes River um, of various patterns. But, you know, um, you could use them with these, with my, uh, my candy colors. I don't. I actually, let me see here. I will show you. No, not in that box. Got too many boxes. Um, no, no, not in that box. Good Lord, Jimbo. You know, when you have three or four thousand spinners, you would think that it might be time to get rid of a few. <laughs> But I'm opening up my personal stash just for everyone. Let's make sure we don't cut ourselves. Because that would be bad. We don't crush these spinners. This is my inline box. And I, these are all number fours. But um, typically, I use a teardrop body. Um, some of them like these. <laughs> Trade secret here, but I've been running it for 10 years, so I'll give it up. So this guy right here, this color pattern. Um, these are a little smaller ones. See how I put that, uh, that Swarovski crystal right in the middle right there? It's insane. It also keeps the blade out a little bit from it. The, the thump on this is excellent. I mean, it's... And it, the castability, because the center, or the weight is back forward, even uh, uh, these little number fours like this, they'll cast a country mile, and Steelhead just gobble them up. I don't, I don't see my big box. Let me see if I got some of the bigger ones. But essentially, that's, No, so that was a little bigger blade. That's a five. So yeah, that's got to be a six then. Yeah, so it's six. Here's one with a five. No, same size body. Maybe I just did some. I'll play around with them. But uh, that color pattern right there, that's my, that is my absolute Deschutes bread and butter. Here's another one right here, a little more black on it. I Again, I have a video where I show you guys how to do that all by hand. It's all done by hand. So no two are the same. It's not a, the same pattern every time. But basically, that is Protex official color. Is it on here? I don't know. It's that green. And then you do the body first in the green. And then while it's still warm, you take the black in your hand and you sprinkle it on top. Basically, you just frost it while it's still warm. And then, of course, bake the suckers at 350 for a half hour. And, man, they're rock solid. Those are brass bodies, by the way, too. So they're not lead. So we ain't doing anything bad to the water. If we can uh, keep some lead out of the water, it's a good thing. Plus, I like the balance. The, the They're machined. So, the lead, you can get differences in the way they cast or even the way they retrieve. and That's okay, but I just like using the brass better. Now, this guy here, if you were watching my Coquille video, man, that sucker right there, the gold and the orange, that was with the, the red right there. That was absolutely king. I caught so many steelhead this spring on the coquille on that pattern right there. 
And I had some bigger ones. I don't know where my bigger box is. This is weird. It's probably out in the garage with my other gear. But, um, of course, I sell all these too. So if you want some, send me an email. Here's my other one. Um, but not with an inline with a Mag Willow number four, but that pattern. So that is white. So you do the body in white. And then you sprinkle the pink. Let's see if you can get it in there. Right over the top of it by hand. You're just going. Tch, 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 tch. And then, of course, bake it. So, Swarovski crystal. So, the reason on some of these. Um, you know, like blue here. I didn't do blue with anything. Just a bearing. These are actually little number three blues that are like tasty little bite-sized morsels if they're being finicky or the water is super warm and they want something small there you go of course i make plenty of them so but um yeah those patterns that's the shoot specials right there um i probably i might throw one maybe two French blades on the Deschutes, otherwise it's all in line anymore. I mean, and it matters. Uh, I've had, well, the last time it was open and I was up there, I went uh, six for seven. Um, so seven casts, six fish, uh, just all on the green one that I showed you. The green with the black over the top. It was, it was just retarded. Um, I actually had to put the rod down, let somebody else use it. They caught two more fish. Um, I didn't do any drift fishing that day whatsoever. All I did was, uh, or fish with a jig. I just threw that spinner and just, it was just bam, bam, bam. They wouldn't leave it alone. Um, there was a couple times, the one that I missed, I actually, it felt like it was two different fish because something would grab it and then let go. Something would grab it and then let go. It was... I don't know. I never seen it, so I can't tell you for certain it was two different fish. But it just, that's just what it seemed like it was. They were they were all trying to attack it, which is always fun when you have attacking steelhead, especially when they're fat cromers, really fat, and they're still nice and beautiful and bright. We catch some nice fish up there. Same with the click attack. Gorgeous fish. I love those fish up there. They're, they just seem to have an attitude. Angry. And that's the best, best steelhead that you can hope for is an angry one. Because so that's when they're, they're at their most fun. But, for all those folks... Wanted a trade secret. There you go. End line on the Deschutes. And try different stuff. You know, if you're tying your own stuff, don't don't be afraid to experiment a little bit. You know, mine's from just literally so much trial and error. It's ridiculous. But um, a lot of it too. There's Mr. Blue. The gold standard for the North Coast. In fact, if I was going to only throw one spinner on the whole North Coast, it would be a blue and silver like that. And that's for steelhead, for schnook, anything. The pink would be a close second or a pink pearl. But, uh, yeah. Mr. Blue. Old buddy of mine, Dave, that's all he would buy is number four, number five blues. It was pretty funny. I mean, he was dedicated. My buddy Eric, he's the same way. He likes the blue, too. Just always has been a top performer, no doubt about that. But everybody get your gear ready. Get prepared. It's that time. It's the time to fly. Time to have fun. Yeah, I need some better light, don't I? Or my eyes are getting old. I am 47. 
It's not old, but it ain't young either. I ain't no spring chicken. There we go. Good old VMC, sticky as hell. Let's lay these out so everybody can see them. And go look at my video if you want to see how to do the candies. Of course, you know, all I recommend is these guys here. Protec, baby. They seem to work the best. If there's something better out there, I haven't found it. So. Yeah, more light. You can barely see it. And of course, trusty VMC. Ain't having a problem getting these. They're made in France, not in fucking China. Like all the other shit. It's so hard to get some tackle right now because it's. or components because they're all made in China. Luckily, um. A lot of our stuff, or a lot of the stuff I use and buy, uh, from, um, from lureparksonline.com, they, uh, it's all sourced North America or Europe somewhere. There's Mr. Orange, Mr. Blue, Mr. Green. Looking good. Oh, let's not leave Mr. Pink behind. And these are kind of gold standard colors, too. You know, you don't need a whole lot as far as colors. The trick is in the blade. That's where the fine tuning is. You know, that's where you really, where things change. And they change by river by what's in the river. And I think that's because maybe that the fish that are in your particular body of water, maybe they were feeding on something different out in the ocean. Um, so like to give you an idea, so, so the fish that say come into Tillamook Bay, you know, say they've been feeding on, um, you know, little sardines, little herring, little juveniles, you know, that are blue and silver like that. Or, you know, maybe um, the fish that came in down off the coast, uh, down in uh, Newport. There's another good example. Maybe they were fishing on needlefish, which sometimes have a little green tinge to them or even a little orange um you know it just it just depends they all feed on different things before they come up river and there's this belief that salmon don't feed when they come into the river i think i don't believe that i know steelhead do actively you know and i don't believe that a salmon's always biting by um by reaction by aggression you know, I think a lot of times they're just trying to get that last few meals. They got to know they're going to their doom. Um, otherwise, they wouldn't be so persistent going upstream. And they all feed on different stuff before they come in. And that's why there's just a few standard colors that you want to use. Um, but you can experiment. You can do different shades of, of different powders all together. Um, you're only limited by your imagination, but one of the things I like to do is when you can, you know, uh, it doesn't hurt, especially if you're fishing in the bays and stuff, you know, cut open a fish's guts, maybe see what they've been eating. Um, and that can give you an idea of which direction you need to go for a pattern, especially if you are a person that likes to pull plugs. I am one of those people. So there's certain plugs, certain patterns that match certain things that the fish feed on. <clears throat> I don't believe they're always hitting it out of aggression. It just, it's not, it's just not normal. It makes sense they would try to get as much food in them as they could to go upstream as far as they could to the point to where, you know, we don't need to eat no more. We need to concentrate on the spawn 
and carrying on the next generation. So just a little theory I have. I'm not saying it's correct. It's just a theory that I have. Um, other people have had the same theory. I'm not, you know, I'm sure there was the first guy who ever started throwing spinners for salmon and steelhead probably thought about the same thing. It's just, you don't hear it a lot, you know, um, you don't hear people talk about it a lot. Um, what's out in the ocean, what they're feeding on, especially as they come up river. I have no doubt that those fish below Bonneville, they're still feeding. Otherwise, they wouldn't go after herring and everything else they can get a hold of. Um, you know, uh, tuna wrapped quick fish. I mean, come on. They're, they know that, you know, hey, let's get a meal. We could use the energy. So... That being said, we're going to turn this video off. Um, before I go, I won't show you how I do this or what these ones are. But here, take a look at. Um, so that that's the one that I was showing you with the green and the black spots. Ooh, got a little chippy in there. It's all right. Fish might like it. Um. You know, number one pattern for the Deschutes, hands down, with the, the black nickel. Or the silver, you can run silver too. But, uh, man, inline Deschutes. But this is one that I did here recently. So that's white, just plain pearl white, and then candy orange over the top of it. And I thought it turned out just absolutely, it's something new that I'm going to try. But you can do white with all kinds of colors over the top of it and contrast like that. And we'll shoot off the light real fast. Look at that. Throw the UV on it. Isn't that sexy? Absolutely sexy. Think that won't catch a fish? <laughs> all right, boys and ladies. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your support. Guru out.